Hello, so this is 6701C, and this is our explanation video for our slingshot, and ranked 4th in quals, 27th in skills, um, got Innovate Award, yeah, anything that else? Was, that was fun. Okay, so drive is pretty typical, um, it's 6 motor, 360 RPM, um, so our motors are stacked on 5 wides to make that spacing a little bit easier. Um, runs at about 0.5 watts of friction, so it's pretty good. Um, just chained together. We use screw joints on all of the... Not chained together, geared not, together. Geared together. Um, uses screw joints on all the wheels. And then this little 48 tooth gear is to help get over the barrier, because it has a little bit more clearance than the actual metal does. It's reflecting off of that. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so it just gives us a bit more clearance, because we didn't have enough stuff there. So we can drive over the barrier going out of the logo. Okay, so this is our intake. Um, build quality is a little scuffed, but it does actually work pretty well. It does work. Um, pulls about four watts, which is more than ideal. Uh, change to the roller mech. Oh, it's just standard 515R style roller mech. Um, flo flowing first stage, and then actually to get the torque for the roller mech, it's 600 RPM for the first stage. And then that's a one to seven ratio, which is 86 RPM, I think, for the roller mech. So yeah, uh, nothing too fancy there. Then I guess we can move on to our pneumatic system. Yeah, yeah so we actually have a I don't see this on a lot of robots, and I'm not sure why, because it's clearly the best way to fill up your tank. So you have a bike Schrader valve thing, uh, which is in the legal parts document. You can't buy them from VEX, but you can buy them from SMC, uh, which is the manufacturer, and you should really buy all your parts from there, because they can you can buy parts individually, and then you're not giving money to VEX, because like VEX's work culture and stuff is bad. But um, so yeah, you just have an on-off valve. So when you want to fill it up, you twist that open. <laughs> Then when you get to 100 PSI, you just close that off. And then when you take this off, you don't actually lose any air. So the main system still stays at 100 PSI. You don't have to worry about like quickly taking it off or anything. Then we have like first tank, second tank, and there's a whole lot of tubing running throughout the robot. I think we have maybe a lot, like eight cylinders or something like that. Oh, and the zip ties snapped on the tanks. They used to be more secure. Yeah, and um, we use them for all sorts of things like the slingshot. Um, we have a pneumatic roller at the back, which is cool. So that's just powered by double acting cylinder right there. And it works really well. Uh, very, very fast. Um, mostly use it for Autom so that we can just back up. And it also functions as a backup roller. Let's see what else? We can do end game while we're back here. So, uh, cool thing about our end game, uh, Never early expanded. Uh, we have a really good latch on that system. So happy with how that works. So we use the same system for all of our things. So that uh, cylinder is pushing up into this lock bar and it actually has rubber bands pulling it down. Um, yeah, you can see them like, those are the rubber bands right there. So it's actually pulling it down. So you actually need air pressure to keep it up. Um, so then once you put this on, you put these little zip ties. This is fairly standard stuff for Endgame. Uh, you load it, and then actually the tension of these four, because these four are all loaded, actually keeps it in place. Yeah, yeah. We have a time lockout too, so you can't accidentally fire. Then if you want to do a close-up of it, the system. So then when we change the direction of the cylinder, it gets a ton of force pulling it down because there's all the air pulling it down and the rubber bands pulling it down. And then, boom, there it goes. Uh, lots of points. And we have eight of those. We have a pretty much identical system on the bottom for that. Goodness, it's hard to see. Yeah, it's very cramped. The slingshot's kind of in the way. Yes. But yeah, same idea. Have the then, two cylinders yeah. on either side going down. The standoffs attached to them go down, lock it in, and then the zip ties would go on the two levels. There, with polycarb separating. Real quick. Okay. Uh, slingshot's automatic, so kind of weird. And it needs to be up for the bottom wing game to go, but yeah.
boom, there we go, fires. And we have the exact same thing on our blocker. That's all fully automated. So this starts the match up, pulling out. The rubber band's also all snapped on it. Um, so uh, they're under a lot of tension. But then the cylinder just goes down, and then rubber bands pull it out. Block, um, it did work. Uh, just didn't get to use it a whole lot. And we have blockers at the front as well. We also have blockers at the front. They're clear polygon. They really didn't do much except for in one autonomous routine where we blocked three shots from the opposing alliance. Um, now, the slingshot, which is the really cool part of this design. So, better okay. might die any time. It's really low. Um, so, we have a band release system. So, this is kind of scuffed, but it works. It took a long time to figure out the logistics of. So, you have these rubber bands on. Okay, so yeah, these start the band, match right there. So yeah, band release, it's loaded like that. The slingshot pulls back. The whole thing is automated, so I don't have to worry about it during driver control. Then, can you? I'm about to fire it. So I know, can you like put your hand? Okay, so then the bands don't fall off. Then when we want to put them off, you can show them the cylinders. Probably on this side is a bit easier. Whoa. The little blocker. So that cylinder right there. That um, one. Oh. No, that right one. There. Uh, it's connected by a piece of string to the band release up top. So when I press a button, or it's, I guess it's automated and autonomous, but it's linked to a button too. Then you want to go out. Oh, let's do it. They go flying off, and then slingshot resumes course as normal with slightly less power for matches. Yeah, match load feeder. This was mostly used for programming skills. Um, used it a few times in matches. Yeah, especially in the higher level matches where you start to run into discs. Uh, so you just kind of put them on the feeder. That worked pretty well. Um, able to do it a lot faster with the actual feeder though. So yeah, that is the latch. Um, it's those like cut up mutilated C channels. These. Yeah. And then by a piece of string, which is right there, they're actually attached to this solenoid. So that solenoid pulls the latch down. And then we have a winch at the back here. Oh, I was gonna show the winch. Okay. Oh, winch. Yeah. Uh, pretty simple, although one of the cool things, all these strings are not loaded properly, so they're going all over the place. Um, the winch here, as it winds up, the diameter slowly gets smaller as it goes over, which increases our torque because the rubber bands get more stretched out the further back you go. So, let me show that. So you progressively get more torque, which means you can run a faster, uh, slingshot. And then it unwinds itself, all using the internal motor encoder. Um, and it just pulls back until the velocity reaches zero. Um, and then in terms of the actual latch, um, you can watch it release. So, this goes out, back, latches in, and does that consistently. That doesn't screw up. Uh, fully automated. Um, yeah, it's got some zip ties. Not the best build quality, as I said before. Um, Mounted off of screws in there. Yeah. Which may or may not have bent. A yeah, couple they times only and needed to be bent back in place once this season, which is pretty good if you ask me. Uh, other really cool thing is the distance sensor we have, uh, which really all catapults and other slingshot designs should have had. Okay, there it is. So there's a distance sensor in there, right in there. Um, that actually counts the number of discs that are in the robot at a time. So let me flip this around. Careful. Yeah, it's reading like Did seven point. Change the way to make that no. It's like seven point eight inches. Uh, pretty consistent. That usually within like point one inches. And when you put it the first disc in, it goes up to around seven point five. Then second disc, six point six. Third disc, five point eight. So it knows how many discs are in there at a time. It can also tell if it, it picks up four discs. It's actually saved us from being DQ'd in a programming skills run because uh, it picked up four just the way that the shots went and then it fired um, out into the middle of the field. And then we went and got match loads. Yeah, so it was smart enough to not get itself DQ'd. Um, Which was very nice. It's been useful in autons too because if like the three stack or something doesn't fall over the same way, then it can know it's missing a disc and it goes and picks up another one. So all in all, that's probably one of the coolest things on this butt. Um, I don't think there's much else.